Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make these cards, you can visit my online store and the link is below in the description box. Today I'd like to share with you my second alternative project using the October 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Joy to the World. So this kit came with everything you need to create eight holiday cards. And in my unboxing video, which I'll link up here in the right hand corner, you can watch me create these cards as well as see what is inside the kit. So what I like to do is take the contents of the kit and create other alternative cards using those supplies as well as some of my own craft supplies. And I usually create handmade cards. And so today these are the cards that I created and I'm going to walk you through a couple tips and tricks for making these cards. So as you can see, these cards have a similar layout and we're going to be doing another two from one card design today. And so what that means is I've used one card base from the kit to create two cards. So let's go ahead and get started. Don't miss out on the fun. Make sure to subscribe by November 10th to receive next month's Paper Pumpkin Kit. This kit will give you everything you need to create beautiful and fun projects. Subscribe by clicking on the link below in the description box. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of the card bases from the kit and I have the vertical lined card base and we're going to trim it. Now these card bases are a little larger than the um, average card size that we use here in the United States. And so I'm just going to cut off a half inch from the top and that's going to give me a finished size of five and three eighths. Next, I'm going to trim right down the middle and I'm going to trim at four and one eighth. So now that I have those two pieces, we're going to cut them both at three and a half inches. And that's going to give us this larger piece here. You can see that I've used that same um, size. If you flip this around, you can see how they're very similar in layout, but this one's just upside down. So go ahead and trim them both at three and a half. And we're going to use both of these pieces to make our cards today. So the next thing we're going to need is the top of one of those envelopes. So from my alternative project number one, we used the bottom portion of this envelope and we removed the top. And this is the flap part. So you're gonna start by removing this crease line. And so I like to just cut a little bit on the other side of it just to make a nice clean edge. And then we're gonna remove the sides And just kind of keep rotating so then you can cut again here and then cut again so what we're looking for is the length needs to be four and a quarter and then the width can be any size so what I've done here is I've used a half inch on one and then a full inch on the other so we can go ahead and get that from this piece here So we've got a half inch and a one full inch. Okay, so now that we've cut our pieces down that came from the kit, let's go ahead and add these to our card bases. So I do have two card bases here. They are Whisper White cardstock. They've been cut to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored at four and a quarter. And I'm just gonna start with the one. I'm gonna use a bone folder to make a nice crease. And then we're going to add the paper to our card base. And I'm just going to use some stamp and seal. And this one, this, so this is the larger of the gold foil and it's going to go at the top. And there should be about a 16th of an inch all the way around. 
And then we're going to use the smaller piece of the plain crumb cake card base. And we're going to add that to the bottom. And again, about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. And it doesn't matter if there's a little overlap or not right here where they meet, because we're going to be covering that up with our strip of cherry cobbler. So go ahead and just add that to your card as well. And you just want to make sure this is large enough to go to the edge of your card. And something like that should work just fine. So one of the tips I'd like to share with you is how to stamp the wreath image over the wreath die cut that came in the kit. So there are, I think, four or five of these dies and they do fit, the image does fit over the wreath in such a way that the berries aren't being covered by the stamp. And there are lots of different ways out there um, from different demonstrators on how to get this, this image to line up with the um, wreath die cut. But I came up, of course, with my way of doing this. So if you haven't removed your stamp yet from your um, plastic sheet, then um, this will be a little bit easier. But what I recommend is making sure that your stamp and the image, they are lined up. So you can see that I have it exactly lined up with this image. Okay. And so once you have that, you're going to, there is this little marking right here that's kind of a little right angle. And right near that, there's a little um, bend in the stamp, kind of like a little valley. And what I've done is I've taken a permanent marker and I've lifted up and I've just added some permanent marker here to this corner. And what that's going to do, it's going to do two things for me. It's going to help me line back up my stamp onto my um, plastic sheet for storage, which doesn't really matter. But if it matters to you that these are not lined up nicely, then that will help you do that. And it's going to help me line up my wreath. So if you have placed, so place your wreath. Um, if you haven't removed it from the outside paper yet, you're going to place it so the two flowers are on the top. And what you're going to do is you can now line up your image so that this marking here kind of sits around this one berry at the top. Okay. Now, if by chance you have removed this, this is the berry that sits next to a grouping of three along the outside edge and directly beneath it is another grouping of three. So for example, there are only three single berries here. This one is not near a grouping of three. This one is, but if you go directly to the center, there's no grouping of three underneath it. And so this is the berry we're looking for. And if you can line it up with that berry, then the rest of your stamp image will line up so that you don't have to cover any of those um, berries with the wreath image. Okay, so let's go ahead and stamp this. You're going to stamp it with the Just Jade ink spot that came in the kit. All right, so again, find that little marking and you're going to take your, um, you're going to kind of cover the little berry at the top with that marking and then just kind of take a look around and make sure that everything is fitting nicely before you stamp. So you do still kind of need to just double check that everything is right where it's supposed to be before you stamp. And then you get a really nice image and you can see how those little berries all fit around that stamped image. Okay, so hopefully that little tip will help you stamp the rest of your wreaths. Now, if by chance you just went for it, it doesn't really matter. 
right? Because those berries will show up oh, um, through that Just Jade ink. So this is just if you want it to be right on. There is a little insert here that you can also remove. And then we'll put that on in just a second. I did want to use this beautiful gold foil greeting. And so I've chosen to use Peace. Um, you can choose any of the greetings that came in the kit. So when I add adhesive to this word Peace, I'm going to add it only to this C and E and then to the P and E because that's the those are the areas that are going to sit over the wreath. And I'm going to use a little bit of liquid adhesive and just put a couple dots around kind of in the areas where it's just a little bit thicker and you're just going to add it to your wreath. So C and E on one side and P and E on the other just like that. So now we're gonna add the wreath to our card with some dimensionals. And I have cut my dimensionals in half so that I can get more use out of them. Sometimes I will use a full dimensional. It just kind of depends on the project and the piece of paper that I'm using. And sometimes how quickly I want to work. So go ahead and add this piece now to your card. And I wanted it just at a little bit of an angle. So I'm having it move up and right over that strip of cherry cobbler cardstock. And then we're going to add a little bit of the twine that came in the kit. I love it when the paper pumpkin kits have twine. It just is a nice little addition to your cards. So you can cut between eight to 10 inches, just depending on how small or big you want your bow to be. I cut eight and I can usually tie a, a pretty even bow with that amount of twine. Go ahead and place a glue dot and I'm placing it right where the cherry cobbler paper and the wreath meet. And then I'm going to remove that paper backing and add my bow at an angle. And then if I wanted to trim those ends, I could do that. So then the last thing I wanted to add to this kit were some of these wonderful gems. And I think they just work really, really well with these cards. So I'm just gonna place two here at the top, one large and one small, and then maybe another small one here at the bottom. And that card is all done. Okay, so let's move on to card number two. We're using a lot of the same layout ideas. We're going to switch the um, size of paper. We're gonna still leave the gold on top, we're using a thicker piece here of the pattern paper. We're going to be doing a little decorative edging to this um, square piece of cardstock. We're going to learn some stamping techniques and then add a little bit of an embellishment over those holly berries and, um, and then do some more embossing here with the joy. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Let's start with the card base and fold that in half again and then score with your bone folder. Go ahead and add. You can start with either size of paper. I'm starting with the larger crumb cake size. And this is just gonna go on the bottom. And again, about a 16th of an inch all the way around. And then the gold embossing will be at the top. So we're now going to cover up this line here with one of the pieces from the envelope. So this is the thicker piece that's about one inch in width and it's four and a quarter in length. And I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit lower so that we can see more of that pretty gold foil and just make sure that it's lined up. Sometimes I like to use my grid paper. So I line up my card on my grid paper 
and then I can see if that paper is lining up and matching um, on the same sides. That kind of helps me make sure it's straight. All right, so we're now gonna just put this off to this side and we'll do our stamping. So I have a couple different pieces of Whisper White cardstock. I have one that is two and a half inches by two and a half inches, so it's a square. Then I just have a scrap piece where I can stamp the word joy and fussy cut it out. And then I have a piece that's a half inch by two inches, and that's for the rest of the greeting to the world. Let's go ahead and start with stamping our wreath. Now, you may notice that this wreath looks really full, and that's because I'm doing a two-part stamping technique. Um, it's sometimes called a second generation stamping technique. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ink it up one time and then we're going to stamp it two times without re-inking re um, between the two stamped images. Okay, so now that we have that marking, what we're going to do is we're just going to line that up wherever we want. There's no right or wrong here. Okay, so you can see here how it's a nice solid image. And now we're going to stamp it again without re-inking. And we have that marking and all we can do is just twist it maybe a little bit. So now that marking is in the corner and that's gonna give me just another um, image behind that first one to make it feel nice and full. Okay, so now we're going to stamp the berries in the wreath, and I just have some cherry cobbler ink, and we're gonna grab the little three berries stamp, and you're just gonna ink those up, and I stamped them right in the middle of the wreath. So just, I think I got about nine in there, so just kind of rotate it around your wreath, Just try to get it in there nice and even, something like that. So while we have that cherry cobbler ink out, let's go ahead and stamp the to the world. So just place that on a clear block, ink it up and stamp this in the center of that two inch strip. Okay. All right. So before we do anything else, we're going to put a little bit of a shimmery effect on these berries that we stamped and it needs some time to dry. So we're going to do that now and then let it dry while we finish making our card. So what I have here is the shimmery crystal effects and um, it's pretty easy to use. You just want to make sure that your um, liquid is in the tip and you just squeeze just a little bit so it touches the berry and then lift it straight up. And you're gonna get a little bit of a tail, but as it dries, it will um, come back down and just make a nice little blob to give it some three-dimensional feeling to your card. So I don't know if you can see it right there where I've placed it, but it's just a little bit of a fun look to your wreath. So again, just fill it up with the liquid and then lift straight up. And even though it has a tail, that tail will fall and kind of round out into a nice little blob. And then it does take a little bit of time for these to dry. You could probably speed it up with a little bit um, of hot air from your heat tool if you'd like. But, um, Go ahead and just place it off to the side when you're done. And we'll move on to the next part of making this card. Okay, and then make sure you put the cap back on and you can see how fun that little bit of shiny element adds to that wreath. Okay. 
All right, so now we're going to do our stamping and heat embossing for the joy. So I have this piece of Whisper White cardstock. If you wanted, you can remove some of that static with an embossing buddy. We're going to use the Versamark ink again. We've used it um, on our first project as well. It just was really hard for me to move away from the pretty embossing um, look for these cards since they already have that beautiful gold detail in the card. So just go ahead and stamp that and then place it in some gold embossing powder. And I realized also after my first alternative that I needed to get a little bit more in here. So I've just got a new one. Tap off any excess. You don't need to worry too much about the excess because um, we're fussy cutting it out. And then heat it up with your heat tool. All right, I just love how that gets all shiny and pretty. And that's when you know that it's done is because it's shiny. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little minute and we're gonna fussy cut out the word joy. I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up and then we'll get back to making our card when I'm done with this. All right, so we are done with that. You can see how pretty that's going to look on our card. So I wanted to create an, a decorative edge just to kind of make the card a little bit prettier. It is pretty without it as well. So if you don't have um, this punch, you could try it with another punch or just do a square here. But I thought this little detail really stepped up the card and made it just a little bit more fancy. So you turn, this is the everyday label punch, and you're gonna turn it over, and you're gonna keep your paper out of the punch, but you're going to add, place that corner into the half circle here on the side, and just until it fits. So it won't go any further because the ends here, or the edges of that paper, are hitting the metal of the punch, okay? So you just kind of place it in as far as it will go and then just punch it out and then you get this really pretty decorative edge. So I'm just gonna do it to all four corners. Um, I'm gonna be careful because my shimmery um, crystal effects has not dried yet. So I just wanna make sure that I don't accidentally put a thumb in that um, little embellishment. Okay, so you just keep going all the way around. just like that okay so pretty and it really changes the way that card looks just by changing up those corners okay so this element is going to be added with some dimensionals I'm not going to turn it over just because I don't want to get the um, crystal effects all over so I'm just kind of eyeballing where these pieces should go on my card. This is not the preferred way of doing things and I guess I probably could have put it on my card first before adding the crystal effects. And then, so what you're looking for is about an inch on the right side and I'm just lining it up so that um, the wreath, so this corners are kind of nice and straight. So now we're going to add the word to the world or the phrase to the world. Just go ahead and place that. Um, we want it to kind of come off that wreath shape a little bit, and we're just gonna add it right there to the bottom. So if it kind of covers some of that crystal effects, that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna add the word joy. I'm gonna add some liquid adhesive to the back. You could use dimensionals if you wanted. I just wanted it to be a little bit flatter on the card. 
and then you're just going to place that right over the to the world and again if it kind of flattens out the crystal effects a little bit that's okay so the next thing is another little bow so eight inches again eight to ten inches of twine So you're going to add this to the corner where the to the world and the wreath piece meet. And we've got a little glue dot that we'll add right there. Remove that paper and place it down. Okay. So the last thing we're going to add are some more of these wonderful gems. And I'm going to use two um, up here at the top and then we'll do one at the bottom, just like we did before. So that card is now all done. So I hope you enjoyed watching me create these cards today. If you are interested in getting detailed instructions or seeing close-up images of these cards, you can visit my blog, and the link is in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.